You tell me right, the cool. chart you, you the chart you want up. All right. Let, let me do a little tease first, really quick, All right. so everyone knows. What we're um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Stephen Place. I'm the founder and head trader at investingwithoptions.com. I do options, and I do volatility trading, and I do directional trading, and anything else under the sun. Today, we're going to talk about a desert island trade, and it's basically a, the idea, if you have to go to an island, um, you know, what trade would you put on? Okay, I'm not talking about investments or buy and holds or anything like that. Like if you had, you know, a, a two week or a one month or a three month horizon, what would be the trade that would, you know, it's not guaranteed for profits, but are pretty close to a loss. And this is in context with me right now because I effectively got back from the desert island. It was uh, in the mountains of Helen, Georgia. I had very limited internet connectivity, and I just got back today for a six hour drive home. Um, so of course Murphy's Law shows up and um, breaks everything. But for me. The desert island trade right now is going to be VXX, and specifically short VXX. So if you can pull that up for me really quick, um, and I will give you, you know, hopefully a lot of you out there in the chat have traded this product. It is an amazing product to work with. Um, so VXX is a long volatility fund, and if you've traded it before, and it, maybe you've traded it to the long side, you know how frustrating it can be because it just continues to grind down into dust. And a lot of people hate the VXX, and they hate the idea of how it works. If you go and you read the prospectus, it says straight up in the prospectus, prospectus it says the long-term expected value of your ETN is zero. It already says it's going to go to zero. And you know, if you look at a very long-term time frame chart of VXX, they do reverse splits once it gets below about 20 bucks, um, and then it will continue to drift down and grind down into dust. So including all those reverse splits, including the previous product that was out, um, they changed it around, I think, 2018 or maybe 2019. Um, the reverse split value is something along the lines of 20000 so we've gone from $20,000 a share down to $40 a share. A lot of people don't like that idea, but you have to understand that this is exactly how this index is supposed to trade. Right? You will have periods of grinding price movement to the downside coupled with um, very, very scary, massive kinds of moves to the upside. The way to think of VXX is through, you know, it's like buying a put, right? So if you buy a put and then the, the market doesn't do anything, you're going to have time decay and you're going to lose money and it's going to require much more downside price movement for that trade to work, okay? But if you do nail it and you get long VXX, then obviously it's going to be a great trade. Right? But generally, the focus of your trade setups should be to the short side on VXX. Um, I will love questions. I'm going to get some in the chat, and we'll just talk about them a little bit. Uh, Jay brings, oh, SP brings up a great point. Uh, why not VIX directly? Uh, the VIX, and this is really advanced, and you know, if you saw my slides, you would see this. Uh, the spot VIX is a calculation. And you can't actually trade the spot VIX. You can trade VIX futures and VIX options, but those don't trade off of spot. They trade based off of a forward price. Okay. Uh, Bill K is saying VXX is a wealth killer. Uh, yeah, I kind of agree with that. You know, if you're holding VXX for longer than about two weeks, then you know it's that's not a good time frame to work with this instrument. Okay, it's mainly to the short side that you should focus on. There are some very distinct instances in which it makes sense to get long on it. And then sometimes there are instances in which you just load up the boat to the short side because odds are it's going to do great to the downside. And that tends to happen after volatility spikes. Okay. Fat Fabian is asking a great question. Can't you simply short it and hold? Um, so I'm going to give you some statistics if you want to write them down. And this is over a 20-day window for VXX. The average is minus 5.3%, and the median is minus 8.6%. That means 
for a one month window, you will see the index go down by about 8%. All right, what if I told you there was an index out there that was making 8% every month to the upside? What if I said there was some magical ETF out there that if you bought it, it would appreciate by 8% every single month on, um, you know, in terms of median returns? That would be amazing, right? That's life-changing capital returns. The problem is tail risk. The problem is you see these spikes and they're very scary. You see these moves where, you know, looking at this chart right here, uh, this is post split obviously, but you can see how uh, VXX based around 60 bucks. This is, um, you know, uh, post split prices and then it jammed up to 80 to 100. You also had the crash of March 2020 where, you know, I don't know the exact price of, of the VIX at that time, but we saw, you know, wild and crazy movement during that crash where if you had just blindly shorted or what we would call naive um, naive shorts okay so no no inputs at all if you're just blindly shorting the XX um, it's gonna work it's gonna work it's gonna work and then you lose your shirt so you have to have some other filter in your trade system other than just saying oh I'm going to short the XX all on its own okay um, so you can't really short it and hold, but you can continue to roll a position either by way of short call spreads or buying puts. One of the beauties of the options board on VXX is that puts tend to be underpriced. And it's funny because we can actually just pull up, you know, some simple calculations and say, we know, assuming all other things being equal, that the VXX will go to this price within the next five days or next 10 days. And so you can price that in a little bit. Um, the reason I'm talking about this right now, um, and I've, I've been pounding the table on this for I think about six to nine months. There were a lot of folks that liked this idea. And they didn't necessarily short VXX, they were buying SVXY and they were buying XIV. And we got so many people shorting volatility back in 2017 that the tail wagged the dog. We actually saw, you know, very similar to what we're seeing right now with AMC and GameStop, where if you get enough people buying calls, it's gonna squeeze the stock. Uh, the same thing was going on where you had so many people shorting volatility that it was causing the market not to be volatile at all. And this is due to market makers and other things like that. You know, if you short the VIX or you short VXX, the market maker is en ends up long VXX, then they go into the volatility futures market and then they short vol futures. The market maker on that side takes the other side and then they hedge with S&P puts. And then if the market drops, those market makers cover those puts and it creates this natural floor. And that's one of the reasons we had such a strong rally in 2017 without any kind of drawdowns because so many people got uh, for, forced their way in to exotic instruments and they had no idea what they were doing and it got so big that Volmageddon happened. All right, if you remember that, that was, I'm just doing off the top of my head, February 2018 where um, XIV completely broke and a lot of people lost a lot of money and that started our bear market okay and we can even consider you know from from 2018 to march 2020 we can consider that some kind of a cyclical bear market and all of the things that have gone on have been the result in my opinion of drastically lower liquidity because so many people got blown out on the short vol side now march 2020 happens we got a pandemic. No one knows what's going on, but a lot of people, and I'm not saying retail anymore. Retail got blown out in 2018. On the institutional side, they think they're smart. They're not. You have Ronin Capital, which blows up billions of dollars in losses on short VXX. You have, let me pull up some of the others. You had some pension funds, um, AIMCO, where they were selling on the institutional side a similar kind of strategy, capped on capped variant swaps, and a lot of people got absolutely truck stick. What that means is um, institutional risk managers will not let them, let the traders short VXX in size. 
they're not allowed to short volatility in size anymore. And we can see that. We can absolutely see that because the VIX has found a floor not at 10, but we're seeing it at 16 because no one wants to sell volatility right now. Nobody wants to touch it. Okay? That allows us to get an edge because the edge is still there. There, there is still the ability to profit from it. It's just that a lot of people are terrible trading that kind of instrument. Okay? Now, Will is saying, is it the same as UVXY as VXX? So UVXY is a great product, too. You just take the same premise I said, and then um, you double it, or maybe triple it. UVXY has an extra decay built in. And it's because it's a leveraged fund. So it's very similar to how FAZ, which is a 3x leverage short for financials. And you also have FAS, which is triple long financials. If you go and look at a long-term chart of both of them, they continue to decay over time. So UVXY is very similar. And you know, Steve just pulled up a chart of UVXY, and I'm, this is post-split again. But you know, you had that shakeout. Uh, a couple months ago where UVXY traded to 60 and now it's trading at 30, right? You go buy some puts or you short this. It's, it's, I don't want to say easy money. I don't want to jinx it, but it is simple money. Okay. It, it is once you understand the mechanics of how these work, when to get in and when to step aside gracefully, then you're going to make money. And there are other opportunities where, yes, you can get long VXX and UVXY for a trade. You just need the stars to align. It is possible to generate sustainable, stress-free profits with volatility products, especially to the short side. Now, Steve, if you could, I don't know if it's possible for you, but I'd like you to open up a browser window. Hopefully, you don't have anything embarrassing on it, but I'd like to take you to VIXcentral.com. And if all of you, if you have a couple monitors like me, um, you can pull it up alongside. And what you will see with that is the secret sauce. Okay. Um, while we get that set up, DJ1 is asking, what if the Fed starts raising rates for the short term, won't the spike up? Um, I, I used to agree with you on that, DJ. It's just when we go and we look at instances, and this is more macro, when we go and look at instances in which the Fed starts to hike rates, it's not bearish for stocks. In fact, it's, it's the opposite. Okay. Uh, so Steve's got this pulled up now. And just scroll down to that chart a little bit. I think, I think everyone can see it. This is the VIX futures curve. All right. So the, the green dotted line is 1775 and that is the spot VIX. That is what the current value of the spot VIX is trading at. The July VIX futures is currently trading at 1945 and the August VIX futures is currently trading at 29 or 20.9. What happens here, and this is a very, what we would call a normal VIX futures curve. Okay, what happens here is that at some point, those July futures will converge to spot. And you can go back and you can look at how June futures traded against VIX spot. Um, I think they expired this past Wednesday or maybe it was the week before, but they will eventually trade at the same price. So all other things being equal, we know that the July VIX futures contract will go from 19 half down to 17 three quarters. Okay. Now, if the market sells off, that changes things, or if the market rallies, that changes things. But that is one reason why the VXX continues to decay, because what happens is that the fund will own July VIX futures, and they will converge against the VIX spot, which is two points lower. So there's already that first point of decay. That's not all, folks. We also have the roll yield. See, what the VXX has to do, and it's completely spelled out in the prospectus, and that's why in the prospectus it says that this sucker is going to zero. It is written down there in the prospectus. They have to, at some point, sell their exposure in July contracts and then buy exposure in August contracts. All right, let's do the math. The fund 
has to sell at 1945 and buy at 2090. What does that mean? That means there is, what is that, a dollar and a half? There is a dollar and a half spread that they lose on that roll. Okay, so this futures curve is what's known as contango. It means that the near-term futures is lower than the next term. We, we will see the opposite backwardation sometimes. So as a good example, if you traded in 2007, I, I did trade back then when I was a very young pup, um, USO, which was the U.S. oil fund, skyrocketed to $140 a share because crude oil was ripping, but we also had backwardation. Okay, we're in contango. The most extreme example of contango is in the oil futures market from about six months ago. Maybe, no, more than that. God, time has been flying. Remember when crude went to minus 40 on delivery? That was the deepest contango we've ever seen, or deepest, yeah, it was the deepest contango we've ever seen. Okay, so I think that was what in that means. February or March. It was. I it was that an was echo. In February or March, wasn't it? No, this is me. Well, the the market, the market crashed. No, I'm sorry, that not echo. Um, I'm saying that that the crash in oil was an echo after everything else crashed. Right, stocks crashed, bonds crashed both ways, gold crashed both ways. Oil got truck stick, but I'm pretty sure the oil move was like a month or two after because there were some very weird deliverability issues, right? I actually had friends uh, who live in Texas that were looking to rent um, in, uh, a drivable oil tanker just to go to Cushing and get paid to accept oil. You know, it was just completely bonkers. Okay, 22 April. Yeah, so about a month after the bottom in, oil, in, in stocks. Okay, so what this means is that as long as two things happen, as long as the current near-term VIX futures market is higher than spot, and if the near-term is lower than the next term, short VXX is going to be a great trade. That's That's... A very good signal to work with. Okay, so right now we've got spot at 17 three quarters. We've got July at 1945. So July is higher than spot. That's condition number one. Condition number two is July is lower than August. So both of those are fulfilled. That means you should be looking to short VXX. I'm not a broker dealer. I'm not your financial advisor. This is educational purposes only. If you go out and you short a bunch of VXX naked, just common, uh, and then you get blown out, don't come to me crying. Okay, there are ways you can use the options market to limit your risk. You can sell spreads, you can buy puts, you can do some other things. You can also combine it with hedges in the S&P, but that gets a little too complex. The simplest thing here is as long as these conditions are met, you're fine. And generally, the market's fine as long as that doesn't happen. Now, there are instances in which this flips, and it usually will happen with the market getting some jitters for whatever reason, okay, whether it be uh, rates or elections or big macro events. At some point, if we see July greater than August, and if spot goes above front month, then short VXX is probably not the best bet, okay? It can be, but you probably want to see bigger stretches to the upside and much more aggressive fades, okay? Um, there, Yeah, there are some other things, some other advanced things you can do with um, anticipating this as well. Steve, if you have access to um, the spot VIX chart, um, and if you have access to either a Bollinger Band study, you can overlay on it, or a standard deviation study, you can overlay on it or, or put it underneath. Whichever one is fine. Okay, so uh, pulling up spot VIX what and then the using symbol, either Bollinger what Band. Is the symbol for, yeah, what is the symbol for the spot VIX chart? You know? What platform are you on? Are you Ninja? This is C, uh, CQG. Which is kind of the grandfather um, of uh, 
Yeah, I've I've got CQG data too. Um, I'm just trying to remember. I think it's just VIX, or maybe carrot VIX. We can just look at VXX as well, and that's fine. Um, but what you will find, okay, you can just use VX if that's if that's all right with you. Uh, yeah. What you will find at some point, it's it's not about how low the VIX goes to make it a good buy signal. It's how long the VIX has been at a level. Now, for our purposes right now, we can just use VXX. That's fine. And what you will find is that. If the VXX stops going lower, and if volatility, and that, that just means price ranges, start to compress. So instead of seeing a continued drift lower, if it just stays sideways, and we continue to see the same prices popping up, with that, you will see the standard deviation of it go lower, and you will see the Bollinger Bands really tighten in. Okay, when that happens, that's when you want to hedge. And I'm talking about broad market stuff. Like you can look at index puts, you can look at put flies and things like that. So as an example, thank you, Steve. We just put on the red lines. Those are Bollinger Bands. And that just shows us the volatility. That just shows us the standard deviation. And you can see how in the right before the most recent uh, spike in VXX, we had a very tight Bollinger Band that indicated over the past month we saw a very tight range. All right, so what does that even mean? Right, it means that people who bought hedges into ugly price action, all of that premium has to wear off. And that usually takes about a month. And if we get to the point where maybe the S&P is continuing to grind higher, but we're not seeing new lower lows in BXX, if we're seeing tighter and tighter ranges in, in the spot VIX, it means no one's hedged in a while. We haven't had any kind of spooky price action over the past month to encourage people and entice people to panic a little bit and buy hedges. Once we get to that point, that's the best time to buy hedges. And that is quantitatively proven. All right, so if we're looking at this right now, is it the best time to go out and buy a bunch of index hedges? Not within this framework. But if you give it, a week or maybe two weeks, and if those Bollinger Bands really tighten in, then you can start looking at overlaying some VXX calls, or you could look at VIX call spreads or things like that. Okay, that's one of the very good signals because a lot of people are like, when do I hedge? Because if I hedge, I'm always hedging too early, and then the market gets crushed. This is a very good indicator to use. Okay. Um, are there any questions about this? And I'll, I'll go ahead and just... I'll talk about a course that goes over this in just a little bit, but I just want to make sure we get all the questions knocked out. Uh, Will S. is saying um, the VXX will reverse split the lower it goes. Yeah, once it gets about, I'm pretty sure, sub-20 in the prospectus. Once it gets sub-20, then um, they will say, all right, it's time for a reverse split. Here's when we're going to do it, and then it's pretty seamless. Okay. Uh, AJ is saying it's a Bollinger Band breakout. It's, it's not necessarily about strong movement above it. And AJ, honestly, I, I think that that's not a bad idea to test. Um, where if you get enough vol compression and then a Bollinger Band breakout, that might be something to look at, especially if you see the VIX futures market flip into backwardation. So that, that could be a decent timing indicator. Um, SP is asking, are you holding the hedges with VXX or VIX for less than two weeks? Yeah. With spot VIX, you can do you can hold a little bit longer, but these are very good trading vehicles. Okay, so with VXX, you know you can look at buying calls that you can do straddles. Um, so if you get explosive movement, then you just trail a stop. And so if you know if it's a one-off event like we saw about a month and a half ago, then you just take your profits and you move on. If we see something get a little bit weird, like we did March 2020, then you can just trail a stop and maybe you get really lucky on on a move. Um, I wouldn't look at I wouldn't look at UVXY as a good hedging instrument because you can just do the same thing in VXX calls. Um, if you are if you're looking at UVXY as a hedging instrument because you've got too much size on and everything else, you probably just need to cut size. Okay. Um, Gary's asking, what was the percentage contango on um, VIX Central? Let me just hop over that. We don't have to switch over. Um, 
the percentage can tango is just the um, the difference between the two contracts. So right now in July we're at 19 half. In August that's 2090. So 2090 divided minus 19 half divided by 19 half. That's how they get seven percent. You can also, Steve, if you can, there's a contango tab up on top. And that'll show you how often we are in Contango. So it's going to be above that chart. So if you just scroll up a little bit from that chart, um, yeah, you can go to Contango right there. And what you will see is that the market tends to be in Contango most of the time. There are um, there are instances in which you know, like in 2020, we had a, a sustained period of backwardation, which makes perfect sense because it was the apocalypse. <laughs> and once that went away, it became a very good time to sell vol. Um, so I saw a really great question. Uh, DDC is asking, are you always going to get a breakout once the bands contract? It's not guaranteed. It's just if you're looking for that tail risk, if you're looking for the, the explosive movement in the VIX and VXX, it is most likely preceded by realized vol contraction of the spot VIX. And that's the, that's the fancy way of saying, hey, guess what? It's been in a range and it hasn't moved in a while. That means a lot of people are under hedged and we're about to see something spooky happen in the market. Is it guaranteed? No, but usually that's the timing signal to work with. And W2JC is saying, don't forget that the long put will be losing value all the time. Yeah, and again, these are trading vehicles. They're not investment vehicles. They do offer good hedging purposes at the right time. They do not offer good long-term hedging purposes. The, the best way to hedge your stocks is to sell them. Um, but if you do need a little bit of a convexity hedge, if you want just-in-case protection, you can do that. Um, but generally, again, a way to continue to get extra yield out of the market right now is being bearishly biased short or being bearishly biased these volatility products until proven otherwise. Okay. Um, Didi is asking, do you have a general percentage of the time? I, I have to pull up the PDF. Um, someone, someone smarter than me did the work on the back testing for that, uh, but the PDF is out there. So if I, I think that's pretty much covers it, I do have a course for this. If you do want to go down the rabbit hole on this, I talk about, um, uh, I think we've got four different trade strategies in this. You've got the grind, the calm before the storm, the SHTF fade, and then the flip. And those are my four core strategies with trading VXX. It's all within a trading system that I have. It's 10 videos with four trading systems. Can anyone guess what SHTF? means for that <laughs> um, but if you're interested the original price is 149 current price is 97 uh, to get access to it I'll just put it in the chat really quick investing with options coms forward slash island because it's a it's my desert island trading strategy and hopefully that link will work for you if you are interested in um, getting access to that course uh, just put in your payment information, and my system will email you your login information, and you'll get access to our course portal, and we can go from there. Um, so, yeah, that's that's all I've got. I know that that was a very dense amount of information, and that is simply because we had some technical issues, and I do apologize for that, uh, but I hope that you did get a lot out of this. This is my pound-the-table setup right now. Institutions aren't allowed to do this. They, they used to be able to, and then March 2020 happened, and nobody wants to touch it. Nobody wants to sell vol. No one wants to sell swaps. And that persistent risk premium that had existed for the longest time and it disappeared in 2017, it's back. And you've got an edge there. Okay? Any other questions before we wrap up? Thank you all so much for your patience tonight. Thank you for the great questions. I really do appreciate that. Um, I'm just going to scroll back and make sure I didn't miss anything. Let's see. Hedges, bonds, and breakouts. Fed rates. Apocalypse. 
Um, someone did mention, okay, someone said, well, does it always break out from the Bollinger Bands? And no, it can absolutely just completely fall apart, which is fine too. And, you know, sometimes hedges work, sometimes they don't. Uh, you can use some other option strategies where you don't, you don't have to just go straight long. You can buy straddles uh, because what tends to happen is that when we get a quiet period in the market for a sustained period of time, options get really cheap, and that's a good way to play it. Uh, yes, the recordings will be out later for the, um, for the latecomers, I guess. Again, to get access to the VXX trading course, you can go to investingwithoptions.com forward slash island, and I think that's going to wrap it up for the night. Um, Will is asking, are the fees high for shorting VXX? Um, are you talking about margin, or are you talking about just in general? I mean, commissions are commissions. I'm pretty sure VXX is very easy to borrow. It's an incredibly liquid instrument uh, because it's it's tied to the S&P and it's tied to the VIX futures market. So I, I wouldn't expect it to be. I'm not a huge proponent, on, you know, unless you're near your screens all the time, I'm not a huge proponent of just shorting common. I don't like shorting stocks straight up unless you're a trader um, that that can have stops and things like that. Uh, I do think that the options market gives you some very interesting trade structures that have really good risk reward relative to the odds that they're taking. Yeah, the borrowing fees I don't think are a huge deal. Um, you can also look at SVXY, which is the current short vol ETF. Um, and they work fine. You just have to make sure they're not long-term investment vehicles. That's one of the problems we had in 2017 where everyone thought XIV was just a cash register. Um, but if you're not closing that when things get weird, you're going to get in a lot of trouble. And there's, there's still some open lawsuits. I, I've got a huge conspiracy theory on XIV. I think Someone took the VIX futures market just over the edge, and it completely broke the ETN and it wiped out a lot of people's wealth. Um, so yeah, um, WTJC is gonna is asking why is the blue line flat for a while and then jumps in January? Um, I'm not sure what blue line you're talking about here, other than Contango. But yeah, that's oh, okay. Got it, in January. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about long-term um, volatility readings like that unless you want to trade long-term. But usually what happens is that the VIX futures market will discount December and it will um, have a higher premium in January. And that's simply because December tends to be quiet, right? holiday trading. And then January, things get, we, we start to see movement again. Uh, there's all sorts of weird futures curves. You know, this this uh, curve is not static. It does change over time. It will flip if things uh, start to sell off aggressively in the market. But um, this is a this is about as normal as you can get. And if you see a curve shape like this, VXX will have a headwind. It will continue to decay over time. And so until proven wrong, you know, it's it's guilty until proven innocent. And you can look for that drift to the downside. Um, DJ is asking, now that the Fed suggested they're going to taper in 2023, won't the VIX spike up during the taper tantrum? That is that is an assumption that would require more data before it sees, you know, before it comes to fruition. I, I think that trying, especially with VXX, trying to get long VXX or trying to buy puts based off of Fed expectations out to 2023, you know, that's that's not a trading style that I advocate. Uh, simply because it's a mishmash of time frames. You know, we're we're traders and we're looking at about a two-week time frame for this. So I I love macro and I'll talk macro to death, but we're just we're not there yet. Okay, I think we got this knocked out. Thank you all so much for coming out, and I think that's going to wrap it up for tonight. Steve, if you've got any other comments, um, feel free. Other than that, I think we've covered everything. All right, thank you very much, Steve. Take a look at his uh, his uh, uh, offer because essentially what he's done is just basically discovered how to put the probabilities in your favor based upon historic uh, results. And anytime you can put that into your investment quiver, you just 
giving yourself an advantage of not being whipsawed or uh, at the mercy of the market. At least you got the probabilities going in the right direction for you. Steve, thank you very much. Always good information when you when you come on. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. All right. All right, everybody. Have a good evening. We will see you bright and early in the chat rooms tomorrow. We'll see you then.